Now that we're a little familiar with Python programming, we're ready to actually connect to the real world. We're going to use our Pi to control a simple button input LED output circuit, which you can find in the reference material for this section. Here I'm using 470 ohm resistors, two LEDs, one green, one red, the color doesn't really matter, a button switch and some male to female jumper wires, as well as just some general breadboarding wire. Always remember to power off your Pi when you prototype circuits. One brief short circuit could break your Pi. Double check your connections before you power it on. The intention for this circuit is I want to program it such that I can vary the brightness of this LED and I'm just going to blink this one on and off. So here we have the red LED running at near full brightness and when I press and hold the button, the green LED will start to blink and the red LED dims and brightens. Okay, so to achieve that, I'm going to create a new file from Python, and I'm going to immediately save that uh, in the chapter 2 directory, and I'm going to call it 2.2, let's just say LED blink and dot .py. Yeah, there it is. Okay, so let's let's get cracking. The first thing I need to do are the imports. So I need to import, and this is a specific package for the Raspberry Pi to control the GPIO. R Pi dot GPIO. Uh, we're going to use a trick here and say as GPIO. That's essentially taking in all the functionality of R Pi dot GPIO and labeling it GPIO. Uh, next we need to import time, and this gives us some delays that we can use to actually create that blinking effect. It's always a good idea at the start of your script to uh, define your pin definitions. These are label the pin numbers that have been chosen for your project. So for this project, the LED that was being PWM'd, That was pin 18, so the PWM pin is pin 18. PWM is that effect that allows you to control the brightness of the LED. And the LED that was blinking, I'm just going to call that LED pin, that is on pin 23. And the button was on 17. So that means that if you, if you change the circuit down the track, but still want to have the original functionality in the code, all you have to do is change the definitions for the pins and everything should run just fine. Um, I also need a constant, uh, a constant duty cycle. That 75% um, is like saying, with, with PWM, the duty cycle is a number between 0% and 100% that describes how much power is going to be delivered out of that pin. So 100 is going to be as bright as the LED can be, and 0 will be completely off, with 50% being, of course, about half as bright as it can be. So I'm going to make a variable called duty and give that a value of 75 for 75%. Now we need to set up the GPIO. So we do that using uh, the GPIO object that we labeled before, and we first need to set the mode. This is essentially setting the GPIO numbering to those that were defined by the manufacturer of the chip. That is, to use the numbers, to use these numbers, we need to use the BCM or Broadcom numbering system. And now we need to actually tell which, we need to tell these pins what we want them to do, whether we want them to be inputs, outputs, outputs with PWM. This is where we define that. So we can say GPIO setup, and we're going to set up the LED pin first. So let's set up that as GPIO.out. Now we can copy that line and paste it for the PWM pin because it is still going to be an output. Uh, while we're doing that, I might as well just save myself the typing and paste again, but change PWM pin to button pin. 
And now we need to set this to GPIO in because we're using the button as an input. When we use buttons as inputs, with, without any other supporting hardware, we can use buttons as inputs by activating what's called an internal pull-up resistor. If you don't know what that is, I've included a link to a tutorial in the resources. But for now, suffice it to say, if you're going to use a button input to your Raspberry Pi, this is going to be how you can set it up as long as you're using the same schematic. So that's pull up down equals GPIO dot pull up down up. So all of that is just to activate the internal pull up resistor, which will allow us to use our button. <clears throat> okay, so let's next we need to actually initialize the PWM channel. We've set up the PWM pin as an output, but we haven't actually attached it any PWM properties yet. So we're going to create an object called PWM and invoke gpio.pwm to attach it to PWM functionality. We're going to choose the PWM pin. And this next argument is just a number. That is the frequency that we want PWM to run at. Sorry, I didn't, I didn't quite cover it, but every time we invoke something that has these brackets, what goes in between the brackets is essentially the input. So if, if GPIO.setMode is a function or a method, then we're giving it some information with what we're putting into these brackets. So we can see that we can pass in multiple pieces of information or arguments. So we, we, we could pass in any number as long as the function is set up to receive that number. So here we're passing in one, two, three uh, arguments. And here we're passing in two. This one with 200 being the frequency in Hertz that we want the PWM channel to run at. So that is the, the GPIO setup. I'm just going to quickly drive the pins to off to start off with as kind of like an initial state. In GPIO.low. So this will set our, our blinking LED to off initially and PWM.start. So this is what's going to start our PWM channel and it's going to start it with a duty cycle of 75% because we've defined duty as 75. Okay, that was, that was quite a lot to go through and every time you need to use GPIO, you will need to go through a process quite like this. So it's, it's probably gonna be quite convenient from now on to kind of copy and paste a structure like this so that you can quickly set it up. Because it is, it is a little tedious, but it's worth going through all the way at least just once so that you know how to set up the GPIO as you need to. But this is where we're gonna to get to the, to the meat of the program. We're going to, to write the functionality of the program. That was just the setup. So let's get started. What we first want is an infinite loop. That is, we want, to, we want the program to run, to set itself up, and then loop with the actual functionality after it's been set up. So the way I'm going to do that is with a while loop, and I'm going to say while one, because a while loop will continually execute while ever the condition is, while ever its condition is true. And because we've passed in a one, and are always passing in one, that's, that's evaluating to true. It's not zero, it's, it's always true. So when we, when we strike enter there, we go to the next line and indent it. So we're now within the while loop. And this is where it can be helpful to just start writing what's called pseudocode, which is where you can kind of tell yourself the story of what your code is going to do. So I'm gonna say, if button not pressed, do something and down here if button pressed so what was it when we pressed the button we had the blinking green and the red was becoming brighter and dimmer so blink blink green and bright dim red and this was just I think bright red. Okay, so this is 
this is this pseudocode is going to help us kind of plan how we're going to tackle the the script. So we clearly have a condition which is going to be if the button is pressed or not pressed. So I can replace this line with an if statement if button is pressed. So we read from the pin, we read from the pin that's attached to the button with gpio.input and button pin. So just as a as a kind of technical note about how pull up resistors work, the the condition for the for this gpio.input is going to be low when the button is pressed and high for when the button is not pressed. So that means when the button is not pressed, this if statement is true. So not pressed is going to be this first part. And this next part is going to be else. So we want the bright, the bright red LED, which was uh, PWM dot change duty cycle. So this is how we update the duty cycle for our PWM channel. And I'm going to set it to that duty, that 75%. So it's not as bright as it could be, but it's definitely on the way. And the green, the green LED was off for that case. So gpio.output LED pin gpio.low, low, all in caps. So that completes the first half of our condition. And then into the else. So we're already meeting if the button is pressed because it's the it's the opposite to when it's not pressed. So that's that's okay. So we need to blink the green and brighten and dim the red. So let us first make the the red LED bright so we can use we can copy that line of code because that's to make it bright. And we can turn the green LED on. So I'm going to take this bit, put it here, and just set this to high. Yes. Set that to set that to high, yeah. Then we can have a bit of a delay because we need we need a delay to have a blinking effect. And we do that with the time.sleep function. So that's why we imported time. And we can see if we leave that bracket open long enough, we get a prompt telling us what the function is expecting as its input. And here it's expecting a number in seconds. So I'm going to say 0 0.5. And then we can do the same thing again. So I'm going to copy all of that code, go to the next line. But this time I'm going to make the, the LED dim. And to do this, I'm going to say 100 minus duty. So what that does is it will take a value of 25 instead of 75. And that allows us to change this without having to later change other parts of the code to update how it works. And this needs to be low instead of high. And I think that is everything. Um, we're not quite done, however. So when we initialize GPIO like this, this sets up the pins to, of course, drive LEDs, read buttons, etc. But when we quit the script, the pins are left in that state. So we kind of need to clean up after ourselves when we quit the script. And we do this by wrapping our entire script in something called try. So I'm going to highlight the whole loop. And you can either go to Format, and you can select Indent Region, or you can press Control Right Square Bracket, which is what I'll do now. So Control Right Square Bracket, that indents everything. So I can very easily put all of this inside another, another piece of logic, which is Try. You don't need to worry so much about what Try is, because we're more represent, we're more interested in the exception to try. So what this means is the code is going to try whatever is in this loop. And when something called keyboard interrupt happens, it'll run the exception to the try. 
So the keyboard interrupt is how we quit our script. And that means that in that accept part of the code, that's where we need to reset all the GPIO to a safe place so that we can use the Raspberry Pi for other stuff. So within that accept, I'm going to invoke pwm stop, and that cuts our pwm channel. And then I'm going to run, most importantly, GPIO cleanup. And that is what is going to allow us to quit the program and have all the GPIO pins reset to a safe state. Oh, I think we're, I think we should be ready to run now. So I'm going to go up to run and run the module. I don't have any errors on the screen and I have a bright red LED. If I hold down the button, then I get the same effect that we saw at the start of the section. So to quit the script, we can go over into Python and hold down control and press C. And we can see that we got that, that three arrow prompt to come back. So that's, that's it for this section. We've managed to set up inputs, set up outputs, drive LEDs, drive PWM. Trust me, once you can blink an LED, you're already halfway to the moon. I'll see you in, in section three.